Half a month after the incident at Corellia Fortress, a sense of lingering unease still hung over the Empire. The government increased patrols by the railway military police as part of their counter-terrorism measures. While the noble faction bolstered their provincial armies, there were even rumors that they'd hired several Jaeger corps. At the center of everything was the Imperial Liberation Front. They had allied with a terrorist group from the Republic of Calvert to attack the trade conference in Crossbell. And as we'd seen firsthand, had attacked Corellia Fortress in an attempt to fire the two railway guns stationed there. They'd made it abundantly clear that they were no mere insurgents. These were dangerous people we were dealing with. And following their attempts to target Chancellor Osborne and the reformist faction, rumors started to spread of a possible connection between the Imperial Liberation Front and the noble faction itself. Meanwhile, new information was filtering in from Crossbell that surprised us all. During the conference, one of the representatives of Crossbell's state government made the daring declaration that Crossbell would soon declare its independence, breaking free from its neighbors, Calvert and Erebonia. To no one's surprise, both the imperial government and the noble faction dismissed it as nothing more than delusional raving. But one thing was clear, that declaration only served to increase the tension in Erebonia and across the continent. Cool, clear autumn day. The Academy's prestigious board of directors gathered for their first meeting of the year. And that concludes my biannual report. Good, good. It seems the Academy is running like a well-oiled machine. No administrative issues to speak of. Student performance is sitting comfortably above the national average on exams and on general aptitude tests, too. The second year students seem to be having a banner year as well. The student council president in particular has built up an outstanding array of extracurricular achievements. <laughs> well, she attended last month's trade conference, and from what I hear, she put the professional secretaries to shame. I only wish the conference could have ended on a more... positive note. I'll say, the share prices of my company have been on a real roller coaster ride ever since. <clears throat> I wonder why that is. Undoubtedly, what happened at the trade conference has wreaked havoc on the economy as a whole. But moving on. I couldn't help but notice in the recent exam reports that Class 1 and 2's academic performance seems to be slipping. Perhaps the preferential treatment given to the upper-class students is hindering their scholastic development? Well, students belonging to the nobility are allowed to return home during August to learn more about their family's lands. It's a tradition here, but one I can't help but wonder if we've outgrown the need for in this modern age. If I may, Traditions accumulate and hold meaning only so long as they're preserved. Our nation's culture, its arts, its social classes, all are rich with tradition that makes Erebonia what it is. And I believe we have a duty to protect and uphold them. <clears throat> After all, does not this very institution champion the ideals of its founder, Emperor Dreigels? Indeed it does. Though I've always understood Dreykel's intent to be the founding of an academy for the people. Even 200 years ago, when education was seen as the province of the nobility, 
male commoners were permitted to enroll. Today, we have plenty of young women attending, and the commoners easily outnumber the nobles on campus. Perhaps it's time we started taking strides to realize Emperor Dreykel's true ideal. You seem to be laboring under a few misconceptions here. Commoners were permitted to attend, but only as retainers. Retainers served knights, who served lords, who served the emperor. That's the way the Erebonian society functioned. From that vantage, the structure of the academy in its earlier days certainly seems to have embodied that social order. And if that's so, what is there to suggest that it's not the social order itself that has become the aberration? Well... For one, if that were the case, it would be far easier for me to see my views put into practice. But I can hardly get a word in edgewise between you two. Well, I'd certainly enjoy a return to the way things were in Dreykel's time, at least in that particular respect. <laughs> our apologies, Your Highness. Well, our role here is to consider your views and work toward implementing them. <sighs> see what I mean? Would you be so kind as to help me out here, Principal? I'm here to moderate this board. It wouldn't do for me to express my position on the issues at hand. That said, I'm sure your passion for reform will triumph in the end, Your Highness. I suppose I should have known better than to look to my old teacher for sympathy. <laughs> it warms my heart to see such a fine teacher-student relationship. Now, if I may, I'd like to steer this discussion toward a rather timely topic. We've already touched on the issues regarding the Orbal Net and the Orbal Staves, but I'd like to stress again that the adoption of new security measures for the Orbal Net should be a top priority. Well, I'm certainly I inclined to agree. But we'll have to rely on the Foundation directly, as things are looking a little shaky with the IBC. You can leave that to me. The other matter I'd like to review is the use of the Orbal Staves and the Arcus Units. Or more specifically, we need to talk about how Class 7 should operate from here on out. Hmm. Hmm. Setting aside the fact that my daughter is a member of Class 7, I think we need to reconsider how the class should be run, in light of what happened at Gorelia Fortress. While it certainly proved an excellent chance to see what the Arcus units are capable of, I have serious doubts about whether we should carry on with these field studies, given the current political climate. It would be difficult to do so, I admit. With the terrorists at large and the problems in Crossbell unresolved, these are uncertain times. At the very least, I believe it may be in the class's best interest to cancel this month's field study. We could always resume them once the terrorists have been arrested and the situation now. in Crossbell calms down. Hmm. Hmm. Seriously, I doubt Class 7 would agree with them in this one. Arise, O oh youth, and become the foundation of the world. I'm sure you all recognize the words of Emperor Dreykos. They become something of a school motto here. It's my belief that Class 7's actions at Gorelia Fortress perfectly embody the spirit of that directive. They stood together to stop a tragedy in the making and, in a sense, protected the foundation of our world. For them, you guys would be blown to bits. No one ordered them to do it. They took action of their own free will because they knew in their hearts what was right. Some might call it recklessness. Some may think it rash, some may even venture to call it hubris. However, as chairman of this academy, I'm incredibly proud of what the brave young men and women of Class 7 achieved. Your Highness. Huh. <clears throat> Troubled times may lay in store for Erebonia, and for the entire continent in the months and years to come. But I believe that makes something like Class 7's field studies all the more significant. The experiences they're having now will help them find the strength and the means to press on through adversity. I can't be the only one who feels this way, can I? They do seem to be showing remarkable growth. That much is true. Although I have no idea how much my daughter is really capable of, immature as she is. <laughs> I could say the same of my hothead of a son. I do wonder about my brother sometimes. 
However, it does seem that enrolling at this academy has helped him start breaking out of his shell. With the Academy Festival coming next month, we hadn't even planned a field study. So the issue at hand is just whether to hold a field study at the end of this month or not. I'd like to ask those in favor of going ahead with this month's field study to please raise their hands. So the festival is soon. I've heard about the festival. Hmm. All right. I'd like to begin by taking everyone's ideas for our class's part in the school festival. The festival will run for two days next month, the 23rd and the 24th. Equipment setup and the other preparatory work will begin in the afternoon two days before the start of the festival. But there's a lot of preparation needed before we get to that point, and the sooner we get that underway, the better. That's all the more reason to figure out what exactly we want to do. Some of our options include displays, events, stage shows, and cafes. Does that sound right, Crow? Yeah, though no class I know would settle for just some simple display. I mean, come on, no one ever said, boy, we better rush to get in the line for that display. <laughs> well, either way, I'd like to start by soliciting some ideas from all of you. We're just brainstorming right now, so feel free to say whatever comes to mind. <laughs> Nothing's coming to mind, I'm guessing. Would it kill you all to give just a teensy bit of cooperation? I know, I know, it's, it's just... It's kind of hard to focus right now. You're one to talk, standing up there with your nervous fidgeting. <sighs> well, I can't say I'm surprised. The board of directors is in session as we speak, deciding what'll happen to our class. And those of us with family members who sit on that board probably have even more cause for concern. You can say that again. We can't even be sure whether there'll be a field study this month. That's about the long and short of it. With everything that happened during last month's field study, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if they just canceled it. Hm. I can't say I have any particular feelings of attachment to our field studies, but I refuse to accept needless changes to our curriculum, especially with my brother involved in the decision-making process. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Makes sense to me. We also have to account for the fact that going on our field study means that much less time to prepare for the festival. So, as you can see, it presents a bit of a problem. Man, look at you guys taking this all seriously. Um... I probably should have asked a little earlier, but... What's this festival you guys keep talking about? <laughs> Wait, seriously? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have gone over that for your benefit. Every year, the students here organize and put on a school-wide festival. There are stage events, food stalls, and all kinds of things to see and do. And it generally falls to each of the first-year classes to provide the main yeah, attractions. Yeah, participating is optional for the second years, since by this point they're usually focusing on their future careers. Oh, and each of the clubs generally get involved too. Huh, that sounds fun! In that case, we have to do something! We can't just let the other classes roll over us because we're small! You say that, but I've already had one of the girls from Class 1 bluster up to me declaring that this time victory will be all ours. What? It must have been Ferris. <laughs> that sounds exactly like something she'd say. Well, Class 1 does seem to have had it in for us ever since the midterm results were announced. <sighs> if it's all the same, I'd rather not see the House of High Arms claim yet another nominal victory. But we need to account for the fact that our class is markedly smaller than theirs is. Hmm, that's certainly true. <sighs> It'd help if we at least knew what the other classes are doing. It kind of seems like everyone's having trouble staying focused. Come on, everyone, get it together. Instructor Sarah? 
Uh, isn't this a self-study oh, period? Oh, it was. But I thought you all might like to know that the board of directors meeting just adjourned a few minutes ago. So I decided to skip along down here and be the first to break the news. Then? What about our next field study? Are we still on? <laughs> the Chancellor's not the only one with a little too much iron in his blood. Because the board voted unanimously to have you continue your field studies. You mean it? So that's how it is. You know, even though they're always hard work, I actually feel a little relieved. Considering all that happened last month, we'll need to be especially careful this time around. Still, it feels like our field studies are a big part of who we are as a class. Yeah. They're kind of a pain, but oh well. We should be grateful to His Highness and the directors. <laughs> That's good news! Seeing the hard road and the easy road, then picking the hard one anyway. That's youth for you. <laughs> it also sounded like His Highness and the directors will be taking off in pretty short order. So I'll let you guys out of study hall early to go see them if you want. Oh. If you say so. I think I'll take you up on that. Mother! Father! Machias, I haven't had the chance to talk with you since the summer festival. It sounds like you were quite the heroes at Gorilla Fortress. Come on, don't tease us. I'll be the first to admit we acted rashly, but in the end I have no regrets. I'm glad to hear it. It's good to see you again. Likewise. It may fall so far behind us now. You have questions, no? It's written all over your face. I do. We were in... You were in Legram, weren't you? You met Duke Kenny... Kayene. <laughs> Correct. I was hoping to have time to greet you and your classmates, too. But I imagine you would rather not take too close an... In I'd rather... You... Wait, what? But I imagine you rather he not take too close of an interest in you. Okay, yeah, I was tripping up. You imagine right. Still, I'm concerned. What is the House of Alborea playing at? It's not just us, but what are the four great houses and the rest of the noble faction trying to accomplish? Huh, you ask like there's a simple answer. The four great houses aren't as united in opinion as you might think. Even with individual families, there can be disagreements. You know that I differ with Father on several issues. But rather than worrying about others' position, I suggest giving some thought to your own as a member of the family. I'm surprised you actually managed to make it here. I was expecting a business negotiation to crop up just in the nick of time like it always does. Time is something you make, not something you find. All the more so if you're in a position of responsibility. Blah. <laughs> Lady Elise is quite the multitasker herself. You should see her. She has no trouble balancing her time between studies, training, club activities, and hobbies. Of course she doesn't. I'd be disappointed if she wasn't able to manage at least that much. You need to start using your time more creatively, creatively Elisa, instead of simply doing what's required of you. Ugh. I saw the railway guns at Gorilla, you know, and I saw what those Achins are capable of. I can understand my grandfather regrets ever making them. Do you honestly feel things like that are necessary? Are you really okay with that? <laughs> I think the fact that you've seen enough to ask me that now means deep down you've realized that they're both necessities of this era we live in. W well... The opinions of others are only that. Stop relying on them so much. Observe for yourself and draw your own conclusions. That's what someone who is truly independent would do, anyway. 
Still, I wasn't expecting to find myself indebted to you again so soon. Without your intervention, the Chancellor and I would have met our Maker in Crossbell. Don't mention it, we just... We're just relieved you're all okay, Your Highness. Indeed, I'm glad you were able to focus on making a positive contribution at the conference. I wish I could tell you that's exactly what I did, but I could scarcely find a place to chime in once the Chancellor and the Republican, or the Republic's President got going, though the Mayor of Crossbell managed to dumbfound even them. <laughs> I presume you're referring to his proposal for Crossbell's independence. Hard to believe it could actually happen. Well, as long as both Erebonia and Calvar refuse to accept it, the likelihood of it actually happening is incredibly low. Still, they're planning to hold a refundum on the issue to see if the population is in favor of it. So, there'll be plenty more chances for a dispute to break out over the issue. Well, neither of them want to lose that sweet tax revenue from Crossbell. <laughs> Half of it flows into the provinces, too, so it's like, fat chance the noble faction is going to take that line down. Uh, Milliam. I swear, this kid has all the delicacy of a rock to the face. <laughs> so you're Milliam, are you? Your name seems to have come up with increasing freezing frequency lately. Jeez. I was hoping for a chance to see the famous Argette Lamb in action, though. Oh, sure thing. Come on, Lamp. Oh, there. Cool your jets. I'm not sure this is the best place to call the Argette Lamb, just a hunt. Lame. Objection overruled. <laughs> that could have gotten messy. Honestly, it would save us all a lot of trouble if you could refrain from just saying whatever pops into your mind, too. Lame. <laughs> oh, who might you be? Are you, say, are you from the Vander family? The one who serves as the prince's bodyguard? Oh, did Netherheart mention me? Vander. I'm Muller Vander of the 7th Armored Division. I was with the Prince at the conference in Crossbell, so I'm in your debt as well. Glad to be able to thank you personally. <laughs> the honor is ours, sir. It's an honor to meet a member of the esteemed Vander family. Ah, so you're the Radiant Blade Master's daughter, and you must be the, the practitioner of the Ickies One Blade style. I'm always happy to meet fellow students of the sword. Oh, and you must be the young man from Nord, who my uncle wrote a reference for. Yes, that would be me. I owe a lot to Lieutenant General Zetus. It sounds like he's in your debt as well, with everything that happened in Nord a few months ago. Well, you all seem like dependent on young men and women. Ha, <laughs> perhaps the Prince's idea has some merit to it after all. Yeah, <laughs> see, what did I tell you? It's not just Class 7 either. The whole Academy seems so full of life. Perhaps I should take this opportunity to break down social barriers by getting to you know all of them in the Academy's pool. Please don't. If you really want to work up a sweat, I'd be glad to let you run back to him, Dollar. If you kept up if you kept up a good sprint, I bet you can even make it in a couple of hours. You'd actually make me do it too. Ah, cruelty, thy name is more. <laughs> It's like their hearts practically beat in sync. It's certainly one way to look at it. I wonder how long they've known each other. Well then, I bid you all a fond farewell. I hope we have the chance to meet again soon. Hmm. This is... This is going wonderfully. It's a nice little scene. But none of those scenes like this have beaten tales of the hysterious scene that night when they were on the roof having their conversations. Everybody was chilling. You know, that was a nice scene. Three days had passed since the board of directors handed down their decisions. With the assurance that our field studies would continue, we finally turned our attention to next month's festival. However, losing those couple of days at the end of the month meant we had much less time to prepare. 
and no matter how much we brainstormed, we couldn't think of any really compelling ideas our small class could pull off. Eventually, geez, I can't believe we burned through another week already. But hey, at least it's the perfect weather for a weekend out on the town. I hope you all enjoy your free day tomorrow, especially since you've got another practical exam coming up next Wednesday. You couldn't just send us off with a, have a good weekend, could you? <laughs> it just wouldn't be Instructor Sarah if she didn't throw in a little dash of torment. And then we have this month's field study coming up at the end of next week, right? Yep, just like we planned planning. We might have made a few changes to the original itinerary, but nothing major. I'll tell you all about where you're going after the practical exam. So until then, keep on guessing. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to make it into some sort of dramatic re revelation. She always does, though. Oh, I can't wait to find out where we're going to go this time. Oh, and by the way, you guys really need to figure out what you're going to do for the festival next month. First years have to participate, so if you can't think of anything, you'll be showing your field study reports instead. W what? Hmm, that certainly wouldn't be my first choice, or even my fifth. Anyway, that's a wrap for homeroom. If you'll do the honors, Miss Class President. Y yes, Instructor. Stand, bow. Well, I'm sure she was just joking about putting our field study reports on display, I hope. <laughs> Either way, we need to figure out what we're doing by the start of next week. That sounds wise, especially considering we have our practical exam on Wednesday and a field study next weekend. If that's how things stand, we should make it our goal to at least have some solid idea by the end of tomorrow. We also need to check out what the other classes are planning. If we end up doing something that was already being done, we'd seem totally redundant. Yeah, we should split up and start gathering some info. But remember, we need to find something that'll work with the number of people we got. Yeah, all the other classes have more than double the manpower we do easily. And they all seem to have some pretty grandiose aspirations at that. Hmm, if greatness was relying on numbers, museums would be full of artwork produced by a committee. There must be some course of action that can turn our lesser number into an advantage. Yeah, the question is what? If we had an easy answer, we wouldn't be spending all this time worrying about it. And I'm getting kind of pumped up. Well, a little inter-class competition never hurt anyone. In fact, it might spice things up a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, these summer uniforms. Wow, that's definitely different. So, what are our goals for today? Well, first things first, I'm actually going to uh, leave the school building in here all this time. It's not going to do anything for us. This guy, this girl's still lurking. Alright, cool. So, is the festival before the field study or after? That's the question here. Should I go back to the dormitory? Yeah, let's go. Insects, huh? Well, it is fall, I guess. Hard to believe I've already been here half a year. The festival used to seem so far off, but now it's just next month. <laughs> the past six months really have flown by. Huh? Is that you, Reed? Oh, it's Toba. Toa, hey there. I haven't seen you out and about too much lately. <laughs> well, the meeting I was in ended a little early. So I thought that was a nice point to call it a day. I see. Did you guys discuss the Academy Festival? Yep. We've still got a lot we need to nail down before next month to keep the preparations running smoothly. There's enough to discuss that we're actually meeting again tomorrow. 
<laughs> Sounds like work's really keeping you busy then. By the way, have you figured out what you'd like me to help you do tomorrow? I'll even take the tasks now if you have the oh, candy. I usually sort those out before I go to bed. Hmm, I guess I could go over them now. But there's some shopping I really need to do. Sorry, is it okay if I give them to you tomorrow morning like usual? That's totally fine. Rain, there's something I want to tell you. And I'm sorry it's taken me so long to say it, but... I want you and everyone from Class 7 to know how grateful I am for what you did at Corellia Fortress. Uh oh. It, it's fine, really. We've gotten plenty of rounds of thanks for it already. We just kind of ended up in the wrong place at the right time, and we were lucky the instructors were there, and... That doesn't change the fact that you saved my life. I wasn't on the same floor where the conference was being held, but if a shot from the railway guns had hit Orcus Tower, I doubt I'd be standing here today. Toa, I'm just glad you're safe. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, I feel like I'm just kind of babbling on and repeating myself now, so I'll stop myself here. Huh. Conscientious. I think that's conscientious. <laughs> oh, you said you were on your way out to do some shopping, right? Is there a lot on your list? Well, a pretty good amount, I suppose. Oh, and I just remembered I need to pick up that stuff at the bookstore, too. Hmm. Then after I get everything I need at the general store, I might have to make a trip back here to drop it off. You could do that, or I could come along with you and help carry all those bags. How about it? No strings. I just feel like you could use a hand. Oh, oh no, there's no way I could drag you along on all my errands. I mean, sure, it'd be a big help, but I just feel so bad asking you to do it. Ooh, that makes it sound like deep down I secretly want you to come, and that's not... <laughs> <laughs> well, if it eases your conscience, there's actually something I need your advice on. It's about my class and what we can do for the upcoming festival. Green, that you're regretting your choices now. Come on, it shouldn't be too much longer till you, you know, we you let your arms rest. <laughs> I mean, you're at a counter. I think you can afford to actually set that bag down. That should be everything. Wow, is it this late already? I guess the sun has started setting a little earlier today. Still, I had no idea you came here often. Well, Mitch is always able to get stuff you can't buy anywhere else. He's my go-to guy when it's something I can't get at the academy store, like fireworks to use in school events. I even think we asked him for a penguin costume once and he actually got it. Yeah, it sounds like you have a pretty unique shopping list. Uh-huh, wait. How did you end up with all those bags? Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me some of those. Don't worry about it, I'm fine. You're carrying plenty as it is. Uh, sorry, Reen. How about we take a break in the rest area over there? I'll buy you a coffee or something. You wanted to ask me something about the Academy Festival too, right? Ooh, yeah. That does sound like a problem.
Well, your class doesn't have enough people to do anything that involves large-scale equipment or decorations. You could get together and run a little cafe without any problems if you wanted to do something like that. I thought about it, yeah. Still, if we're going to do something, I at least want it to be as impressive as what the other classes are doing. Aha, uh -huh, feeling a little competitive, aren't we, Reen? Well, you have enough people to put a play or run a game tournament. But other first year's classes already apply to do both of those. I see. I don't really want to copy an idea another class is already doing. Come to think of it, what did your class do last year? Oh, it was a cat thing. It was cat thing coffee. Cafe? Oh no, coffee shop. Where we all wore cat suits. And then there was that other event I did with Angie and the others. Oh, you guys got together and did something else too. Ah, uh, it, it's nothing. J just forget I said anything. We didn't put on any event, and even if we did, it would it wouldn't have been on stage. <laughs> I think you just let the cat out of the bag. So you guys did do something on stage. What exactly was it? Uh, me and my big mouth. You really want to know? If you don't mind telling me anyway. Who knows? It might help me think of something class seven could do. Well, if you insist. I can't turn down a chance to help a sweet fledgling first year, especially after how much you've helped me. I reach down to my toes and muster every last bit of courage to tell you. Th thanks. Was it some kind of traumatic experience or something? <laughs> well, in short, we put on a musical performance. A little concert of sorts, you could say. It sounds like Elliot's thing. Why, really? I wouldn't have expected that from you guys. So you can play an instrument, then? <laughs> I'm afraid not. That's how I got stuck being the singer. Angie, Crow, and George all played for the show, though. Wow, that actually sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. Hmm, if we put on a music show, I'm sure Elliot would be a big help. What kind of music was it? Classical, folk, show tunes? Well, it's hard to describe, but it was passionate, really modern. I'm not sure I get what you mean. Ah, <laughs> well... It's not a genre that's really caught on in the Empire yet. You definitely wouldn't hear it played in him Dollar's Opera House, that's for sure. Huh? <laughs> Alright. Do you have some free time tomorrow evening? If you can't come until after you're done exploring the old school house, that's okay with me. Tomorrow evening? Yeah, I should be free. Should I meet you in the student council room? Oh no, can you go to the computer room in the main school building? Sure thing. Does this have something to do with the concert you held last year? <laughs> You'll just have to find out tomorrow night. Anyway, sorry to keep asking favors of you, but would you mind coming to the lower class dormitory with me? If we stay out here much longer, we're going to miss dinner at the dorms. <laughs> you have a point. But really, I'm fine with all the bags. Just leave the heavy lifting to me. Boo, you're so stubborn. <laughs> Chapter 6. Progressive Chaos. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> I think there are... Seven chapters in this game. There's either seven or eight. I think it's seven chapters, but eight if you count the prologue. I like Toa. Toa's nice. Alright, of course the old school house is one of them. I'm thinking of making some food as a present for someone, but I don't know what to make. It's got to be something that screams meat, you know? I think I'll need someone's help to figure that out. If you got a stomach of steel and can help me out, meet me in the cafeteria kitchen in the student union. Mint. Class 1. Year 1. Class 3. That doesn't sound good. Personal work class. Reen, I have a favor to ask you to do me. What? A favor? Okay. I thought I was probably just tripping that up again, but 
Yeah, exactly. Green, I have to ask you to do me a favor. I read that backwards. Well, I put favor in the wrong place. Anyway, I'll be in the training hall on the first floor of the gym. If you come, come prepared. Exactly what are you up to? Good, Mr. Schwarzer, we have come to an amusing juncture at which even were I to submit a blank request form, you would naturally assume my intent to be investigate the old school house, and so it is once again. <laughs> I expected something, you know, more whatnot than uh than his last than the last thing he wrote in that paper. <laughs> Request from Angelica. If she puts it in directly, I guess it doesn't have anything to do with the orbital bite. But it mentions coming prepared. I wonder what that's all about. Let's see. Most of the others seem to have something to do with the Academy Festival in one form or another. And then this evening, I'm meeting Toy in the computer room. I'm curious what she has to show, but I guess right now I should just focus on tasks I've got here. Well, we've got a nice fall day on our hands. It looks like this weather is going to stick around for a while. My first free day since we switched back to the long sleeve uniforms, too. Better roll up those sleeves and get to work. <laughs> well, isn't this just peachy? Things are starting to look up. And, at the same time, things are starting to go down at the same time. So, oh man. I got a long, long night ahead of me. I don't know what I'm calling it night. You'd be surprised if I told you what time it was. <laughs> anyway. So, in the next episode, I'm going to... I guess we're going to do our optional quest and the bonding points, or whatever they, they are called. But, uh... Whatever things are called... I'm just calling bonding points, because I think that's what they were called. And then, if we have time, we'll do the optional event. Right. I doubt we're, I really doubt we'll ever have time to do all three of those in a single episode without it going over 50 minutes. Because the old school house usually takes a while. Like, four or five didn't take a while because I went in there grinding and... I went further in than I usually do when I grind. But, yeah, usually the schoolhouse takes its, ep its own episode. Plus, there's always cutscenes and stuff after it. So, hmm. I don't usually... I usually try to have that in its own episode because it usually takes much longer than everything else. But, so, I will just keep up with the same thing I've been usually doing. Is the... Is to use those points do the optional quest, and if we have time, do the first required quest that's not the old schoolhouse. And any extra stuff that they usually give us. So with that, that is all the time we have for this episode of The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. If you liked this episode, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all on the next episode.